Well, folks, Unification 7.3.8 is now here. And with it, Definitive Edition compatibility has been obtained. So, of course, it is time to update the old install guide. A few things before I actually start the install instructions. Number one, this guide goes into a tad bit more detail and will probably be a little bit slower than your average tutorial. This is because not everyone is a master of technology, so I like it to be as broadly available as possible. If it's too slow for you, please use speed up buttons. Second, this guide covers both manual and installer versions of the ModDB install, hence the fact it is slightly longer than your usual tutorial. Chapters are provided for easy navigation, you do not have to watch the entire thing from start to finish. Unless you want to boost my retention rate, of course. If you use Nexus instead of ModDB, please ensure that the file names are as you see on the screen, or the installer version will not work. Nexus likes to rename things for some reason. If you have issues with the download, please try a different browser. Edge has been particularly problematic this release cycle due to a rather lengthy file verification uh, when it reaches 100%. I personally use Firefox. Some people have also had good luck with Chrome. Uh, Opera has also been problematic, so not necessarily in this release cycle, but in the past it has a habit of corrupting, and I have no idea why. So keep that in mind. The visuals for this are going to be purely definitive edition. If you use anniversary edition, which I will often refer to as AE, target your Soulstorm folder instead, and use the unification underscore AE option in the mod manager when you get to launching it. And finally, please ensure that you clean your downloads folder as well as your either Soulstorm or Definitive Edition folder of any trace of any unification files before proceeding. It's always best to do a clean install and if you have leftover unification files in your downloads folder when you go to download the new one it will rename it and the installer if you're using it will not detect the file. So please ensure that all of that has been deleted. All that said, let's get to the actual install, shall we? The files themselves can be obtained from the ModDB page. There will also be links to these files in the description. We will be starting with the installer version. So, for that, we are going to need to go to the Files tab here and download Unification v 7.3.8 installer.exe as well as Unification v 7.3.8. On this, click Download Now. That will start the download. Then, obviously, do the same for Unification v. 7.3.8 After the downloads are complete, if you go to your downloads folder you should see that they have now appeared. We have unification-v7.3.8.exe and unification.7z. Do not worry if the file extensions do not appear, I just have my computer set so that the file extensions do appear. Now, the unification slash unification.7z file should be approximately this large. File size calculations are different per PC, so it's not always going to be this big, but if it's like, say, half the size, then something has gone wrong and you will have to re-download. Now, to start the install process, let's actually 
double click on the installer, shall we? At this point, user account control will come up. Just click yes, and the app will launch. Note that if you get a, another window that comes up saying that Microsoft blocked the application, just click more info and then allow. And that should then bring up user account control. It's just because it's an unsigned application. Now, user license agreement. This is relatively standard, just saying don't steal our stuff. And it gives you the list to the credits should you wish to view them. Let's click I agree. Now, the destination folder is going to vary depending on whether you are installing this to Anniversary Edition or Definitive Edition. For me, because the visuals are going to be for Definitive Edition themselves, we are going to uh, use the Definitive Edition folder as such. You can find it via the Browse thing, or if you have the Steam version, you can right-click on the game in Steam, go to, I believe, Manage, and then Browse Local Files. And you can find the file path that way. If you are installing this to Anniversary Edition, you need to install it to the Dawn of War Soulstorm folder. Not the Anniversary Edition folder, the Soulstorm folder. This is a Soulstorm mod, so yeah, it'll only work in that specific game. Click Next. Now, this installer will download the mod manager for you. However, the mod manager it downloads is specific to Anniversary Edition. Therefore, I am actually going to untick it. If you are installing to Anniversary Edition, then you can, of course, leave it ticked. It will then begin download, or the install, should I say. I am going to let this run. It can take quite a while. It can take up to like 30 odd minutes for some people. It purely depends on how fast your hard drive is, whether you're installing it to a separate drive to what the install files are on, etc, etc. I am not going to show you the entire thing, because, yeah, otherwise this install guide will be much, much longer, and I will get shouted at. So, I will pause it here. But yeah, if it looks like it's got stuck, don't worry, it is still running in the background. Just let it run. And thus it is completed. So, if we close this... And now, if we look in our Dawn of War Definitive Edition folder, we will find that we have Unification sitting here. Along with, if we scroll down, Unification.module and Unification underscore AE dot module. Now, if you are using the Anniversary Edition, this is the module file you will need to use. If you are using the Definitive Edition, this is the module you will need to use. Now, last thing before we end this particular section is that we are going to need the mod manager. Now, the actual full Unification 7Z file does come with the mod manager itself. However, it is not extracted via the installer. Instead, you will have to use 7-zip to open up the file itself so if we downloads then right click then on windows we would go uh, windows 11 we would go to show more options 
and 7-zip open archive. And then we will see the mod manager is here. We would then, if I move back to the definitive edition folder, we would just click and drag. And if you already have it there, just replace the file in destination. Otherwise, it will just automatically put it in there for you. And with that, we have done the installer section install. So, for those who prefer a more manual approach, let us actually get on with that, and then we will cover launching the mod. So, if you have followed this section, please feel free to skip the next one and go straight to the launching of the mod section. And thus begins the manual section. So, for the actual manual install, the only thing that we need is the unification.7z archive. So, let's click and drag that over to Dawn of War Definitive Edition. For some people it may take time to uh, transfer, for some people it may not. Again, depends on your hardware. With that now in our Dawn of War Definitive Edition folder, or Dawn of War Soulstorm folder for Anniversary Edition, we can right-click it, show more options, 7-zip, the link to 7-zip will be in the description if you need it, and then use the Extract Here command. Now, why do I say the extract here command specifically? Well, if you use the other forms of extract, then it will create what's called a subfolder, where basically it will shove the entire archive into a unification named folder. But the modules and the mod manager will be inside that folder. So it will be effectively unification within unification. Uh, if you get any confirmed final replaces, just yes to all. And yeah. So we want it to extract in such a way that the modules themselves are placed within the definitive folder or the Soulstorm folder for A E. Once the pop-up disappears, you will then find that the files have all been extracted. And thus, the install is actually complete. Yes, that it was that quick. The manual version is definitely my recommended version of the install. But hey, to each their own. And with that, we can move unification.7z somewhere else. I'll just put it on my desktop or something, just to get it out of the folder. And then we can begin changing the mod. And thus we come to actually running the mod. So, let us find ourselves, for Definitive Edition, the Definitive Edition Mod Manager. Now, one thing you should be doing before you do anything else is right-clicking on the Mod Manager, going to Properties, going to Compatibility, and then clicking Run this program as an administrator and clicking Apply. There is a reason for this, uh, namely that a lot of its functions will work better in administrator mode. In fact, some will not work at all if you are not in administrator mode. So let's double click on the mod manager, click yes, and we can see that we now have ourselves a list. Ignore all the dev stuff, but the ones that we are most interested in is unification version 7.3.8 and unification underscore AE version 7.3.8. Now. For Definitive Edition, we want to be running this one here, Unification 
uh, 7.3.8. If you are running with Anniversary Edition and download and like um, installed the other mod manager, uh, you want to be using Anniversary Edition, which is this one here. But because we are running Definitive Edition, we are going to be this. Let's start the mod. And there we go. We are loading. Now, you do not have to do any extra stuff for Definitive Edition in the mod manager itself. Uh, if you are running with Anniversary Edition, then you will need to make sure you click the toggle 4 gigabyte patch option. Because if you don't, you are going to be likely crashing. Reason being is that Anniversary Edition is limited to 4 gigabytes of RAM. Whereas Definitive Edition is not. With LAA off, you are limited to 2 gigabytes of RAM on Anniversary Edition. And trust me when I say that unification requires all of those 4 gigabytes of RAM. And there we go. That is it for Definitive Edition. So, I guess thank you very much for watching everybody. If you have any specific problems such as tech support queries or gameplay queries, feel free to go to the Unification Discord that is linked in the description below. Please also keep in mind that I may post like addendums to this if there is anything I realize that I forgot in the description below. Also, yes, comments are disabled on this video because people keep trying to get tech support via YouTube and it is extremely difficult to do tech support via YouTube. Please make sure you go to the Unification Discord. And with all that said, I shall leave you now. So, enjoy Unification, and until next time, I have been Kaldaris. Goodbye.